Alright, another response video to Pyro and this quantum mechanics stuff. I have been posting videos. I posted one on the Do Not God channel and on the other channel, so I'm going to post this on the Amendum channel. This is sort of a draft science video and not a direct response to Pyro. But just for the sake um, of clarification to Pyro, yes, I'm, you know, the contention still is, is that anything happening on the quantum level, the subatomic particle level, has absolutely nothing to do with how our brains function. Um, has nothing to do with the logic anyway our, our, our logic our software is on the same level as computer software it doesn't depend on any quantum irregularities in fact we would love to be able to pull the quantum out of the quantum somehow and have it be represented in computers because then we'd have a more reliable random gener number generator <laughs> so it's just kind of bogus to even talk about it this has nothing to do with human free will it has nothing to do with human will human desire human um, the the um, the electricity that compels humans to do what they do the um, thought patterns the consciousness the whatever you want to call it whatever um, that's one two quantum math again we're going to keep going back to this the mathematics is 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 just variable mathematics i mean it it, it is it error corrects mathematics so yes over permutations it, it, a certain result will take place but it's only when you do the number of permutations that you end up with a reliable number um so at any one point the number could be um any one of a of a pack of numbers but in the end it has to come out with the certain probabilities anyway so i mean yeah so it's a little bit complex when you're when your variables are continue to be a variable all right and they're not a fixed number but that's all it is it's math that allows you to have variables that remain variables um except they're probable variables uh, so it's like probability math. I don't know what else to call it. I mean, this whole quantum thing just messes it all up because then we end up with this quantum theory crap, which is the your nonsense of multi-dimensions and all that shit, which has absolutely nothing to do with the fucking math. All right, that's just stuff you make up as your explanations for what's happening, what what we are seeing both in the math and in the physical world, which is not illegitimate. What is illegitimate is your speculation about cause and effect. All right. So anyway, I get to the draft science part. All right, so one of these quantum kind of experiment things has to do with electrons and magnets, okay, and when you, when you flip them, okay? So say if you have a, an electron that's north-south like this and you change its position exactly the opposite, okay? That will release a photon 100% of the time. So if it's this way and you flip it this way, that will release a photon 50% of the time. So you get me. So at any one position, it could be one in 10, it could be nine out of 10 times, just depending on what starting position you have when you apply the magnetic force. So that's generally the idea. All right. So, and the problem is though, is that, see, this is all, it's like having a dollar bill and we were doing an exchange. And let's say you couldn't divide this but you did lots of exchanges for pieces of this, but you couldn't divide it. There was no change, no such thing as change. So then what you would do is say, well, here, I'll give you a dollar this time, but the next time, okay, I won't give you a dollar. Say if it costs 50 cents. So you say, well, look, I'm gonna buy it this time, I'll give you the whole dollar, but the next time I buy it, I get it for free. And then it'll come out 50-50 the way it's supposed to come out, right? So that's sort of how these electrons work, is they, they can't release 10% of a photon. They can only release a photon. And so this is their exchange rate. All right, so my explanation that I made up, you know, 10 minutes ago, um, so here's an explanation of the electron thing. Let's say the universe has a clock cycle. And, it, you know, the beginning and end of that clock cycle, let's call it a reboot. All right. And if anything's pulling on anything else during a reboot, like an, you know, an electron, if anything's pulling on it, you know, trying to move it, it fails. OK, it just catastrophically fails. And so it, it just resets itself and nothing happens. All right. So say if it's, you know, it's say if it was pulling on something the pull would stop, the rubber band would go back to its regular state and would have to start all over again. Okay, so let's just say it neutralizes everything at the end of the clock cycle. And let's say one clock cycle 
is what it takes to go from here to here. So the, the time it takes to move an electron from this position to this position, let's say it only moves at one speed, it can only happen, and, but it does take a definite amount of time for it to make this movement. And let's say that's one clock cycle in the universe, or one of these, these, these it's not a clock cycle, it's a clock reset. So now, let's, at any one time, it could reset but in the whole, this movement guarantees at least one reset. So, so let's say the re reset causes the phenomenon of the, of the photon being released. So if a reset happens while an um, electron is moving from one position to another position, if a reset happens somewhere in that happening, it will release a photon. So that's the premise. I was a little, I, I misstated it before. It's, it will release. So when a failure happens, the photon breaks loose and flies away. So if a clock reset happens while a photon is being stretched, um, we could say it's, it's weak forces being, um, um, pressures being applied to it, uh, it will snap the rubber band. Okay, so when you, so one clock cycle, you're guaranteed to snap because you're going to have a reset somewhere in this amount of time. And so there's just no way it could miss. It'll happen every time because it takes the required amount of time. But if you're only moving one 10% of the time, 10, 10, 10, one tenth of that distance, it'll take one tenth of the amount of time. So you'll be able to do that 10 times in one clock cycle. But one in 10 of those times, you will do it during the reset. So in one of 10 times, you will release a photon. The same would go for 20% 20, 20 uh, position or the 50-50 you know, position. You're guaranteed that in that movement, um, you know, you'll either miss or it, because it's half of a clock cycle, it's half of a clock reset. I keep gotta, gotta get the terms right. So it's half of a clock reset. So you're guaranteed that you know you can get you'll end up with a 50 50 result. Half the time a clock reset will take place while it's being pulled on, and half the time a clock reset won't happen, and so it won't release a photon. So, there, that whole fucking experiment has now been fucking explained simply, okay? No magic unicorns, no, no electrons having to understand probability, none of that shit, okay? It's a, just a simple. It's a simple physical force, okay, based on a simple premise that anybody could understand, a clock cycle, and the fact that the reset, there might be a reset that takes place in the universe at the end of that clock cycle when it goes from zero and goes, you know, 170,000, and then it goes back to zero, and it does that in the amount of time it takes to turn an electron. There, okay? So, problem fucking solved. No magic, no nothing. All right, I will keep working on the two-split bu slit bullshit, because that seems odd obvious to have some gigantic flaws in it with this stupid premise that well if we don't observe our observations it does something completely different I mean that doesn't make any fucking sense so obviously it's something in the instrumentation that's causing the phenomenon and it is not happening for some kind of bizarre or strange reason there aren't <laughs> electrons flying in 17 different places at once and then um, just because we look it lands in one place I mean it's just complete nonsense all right so whatever you can you know, Everybody knows my address, so I have the Nobel Prize sent to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Concluding this lecture series. And I'm not calling anybody an idiot. I'm just saying there seems to be an awful lot of people like Daniel Dennett. Yes, I'm a, I'm a hard evolutionist. I believe in evolution, but I'm just going to, you know, make up some kind of, you know, hopeful, you know, unicorns for us all to ride philosophically. And the, and the physicists are doing the same thing. They're not, they're not drawing, they're, they're, not, they're not going where the evidence is pointing. They're trying to drag the evidence where they want to go. Ugh, okay, that's enough. Yeah, hey, under 11 minutes. I didn't think there was any way I was going to explain that under 11 minutes. Probably nobody followed it anyway, but okay. It's, it, was, it was fun.